My name is Adriana Netro. I'm from Mexico and I'm wearing a beautiful wheat peel that I made in 2013. I was trying to get my, my own culture to dress it, to enjoy it, to appreciate it because I was living here in the United States and when you are far from your country, you miss it a lot. And this is uh, the story of a uh, pupil, which is uh, uh, a young man that was killed for the uncle, and then the heart was ripped from his chest and thrown into the Texcoco um, Lago Lake. Um, from there, a nopal was born, and this nopal has little babies too, which are little nopalitos. And the nopalitos have flowers, but they are not real flowers. They are hearts. So I understood in that moment that I am like that nopal. And probably was a sacrifice. I don't know who, whose heart was. <laughs> but uh, I was born. And then I had a lot of babies, a lot of little hearts. And I see these hearts like uh, new opportunities for myself to do different things, to create, to love, to share, to enjoy, to cry. And I also have right here an image of this beautiful goddess and uh, her name is Goyol Shauki. and as a Mexican woman of course I like goddesses <laughs> and Goyol Shauki, I love her story the fact that she was murdered by her brother and she was cut in pieces and the mama is crying for her. So Potlikwe is pregnant and it was a feather coming from the sky. She got pregnant and then the daughter and all the rest of the brothers are mad at her. So Koyoshavki's intentions were to kill her mom. Before she could do that, the baby that Cuatlicue has in, in her belly is born as a grown man. So this soldier, this man with Shilapochtli kills his sister. She is there all cut in pieces. And then the mama is crying because her daughter. But then when Silopochtli said, Mama, don't worry about it. I'm gonna fix it. So he grabbed the rest of his sister and put it in the sky. And now she became the moon. She is there, but still she is in pieces. I identify myself with this goddess because uh, the pain had made me feel like I'm cut, I am in pieces inside. I might look that I am in one piece, but I am not. I feel very close to her. Koyol Shauki being a goddess in the sky has taught me that we can, although we are in parts, we can still function like a one piece. So that's what I am doing. I'm trying to keep it together and keep working in myself. So when I see the nopales, I see the resilient kind of plant that is a nopal. We can throw away a nopal on the, on the street or, or whatever, and it starts growing roots. And sometimes you can see like a carcass of a nopal, but still it has roots. 
I want to be a nopal. I want to have roots, no matter what. I want to survive. I want to thrive. And I identify myself as a nopal too. I can see my little nopalitos growing. You know, sometimes you see different forms, shapes in the nopali. Sometimes if you got lucky, lucky you have a hard shape or beautiful flowers. I want to be that. I want to have flowers in my life. I want to have different hearts and do all this stuff, beautiful stuff, and feel all what I'm feeling, and give love or kisses or advices or companionship. When I was experiencing the loss of a love my love, my companion, my partner, I, I try to find somebody to fill that hole in my life. But I made a mistake. I made a mistake to just um, believe in. I don't know what I, it was not what I thought it was going to be. So again, the process of suffering and regrets and bitterness and all this bad stuff was accumulating in my heart. So I just start painting uh, hearts, upside down hearts. And through this therapy, I, I can tell that it was a therapy. I was just squishing the heart and letting go all the black all the pain, the bitterness, the too much thoughts, too much, uh, like we said in Spanish, mugrero. So all that is things that was just hurting my heart. And it took me a while to empty this heart. So for me, this therapy is Try to clean the heart. I don't know how long it's gonna take. Everybody is different, but uh, in my case, it has been almost 10 years that I've been doing this, having these experiences. And through the different projects that I've been part, especially here with Margarita Cabrera, have helped me a lot have helped me a lot because I didn't know that I was able, I was capable of working with clay. And yeah, I participated in Arbo de Vida and I made this upside down heart. And that piece had also a little dog and some music around it. I think it, at that time I was getting ready to fly, but I didn't know how to do it. But now, I feel like I am ready, I am ready. Because I am in this time, in this moment. I realize this is the time. And I'm so glad to be aware and to be awake. I am awake, I'm my eyes open. Thank you. <laughs> Today, my grandmother is 86 years old. She lives in a large house. She loves gardening and watching black and white movies on the MC. However, it wasn't always this way. Her life wasn't always this easy. This is the story of her survival and her sacrifice. She was born in a small town in the rice fields of North Vietnam. Her parents never sent her to school because they couldn't afford to use any help that they could get. 
when she was a teenager, she met a man that promised her the world. And after two weeks, she never saw him again. She was pregnant. At age 19, she was a single mother with no family, living in a city, working in three jobs in order to support her. She worked cleaning houses, she worked as a bartenderess, and she worked as an assistant chef. She worked around the clock to provide for her young one, and even worked enough to put her in a private school, as the public schools in Vietnam were controlled by the Viet Cong. She didn't want her mother to grow up knowing that type of propaganda. By the time that my mom was a toddler, my grandmother, she sacrificed again. She started dating, but she didn't have the luxury of just falling in love and being with a man that she loved. She had to know that this man would support both her and her daughter. And she asked each one if they would support her daughter, my mom, to go to college. When my mom was eight years old, she finally found this man. She had been a single mom eight years supporting a child, putting her through school from age three. And it was an American soldier from a little farm in California. They eventually moved to the United States, but she was still working to help support because my grandfather wasn't making very much in the army. Later, here in San Antonio, she started the very first Vietnamese restaurant. She no longer owns that restaurant, but it was her sacrifice of her time, her energy, her youth, even potential love that she gave up just so that her family, my mom, my sister, myself, would have a much better future here in the United States than we would have in that small little town in North Vietnam. First, I'd like to give honor and respect to the first people of this nation in the state of Texas. In 1989, my mother told me that she would be leaving a cruel marriage after 36 years. We sat on her Victorian sofa, and we both made a decision to leave an old way of thinking and an old lifestyle. It was then that my mother took off her beautiful wings, ripping them off her back and placing them onto me and told me to fly like a golden eagle. And so I did. I ended up in the state of Idaho, the homeland of the Nez Perce, the Kootenai, the Coeur d'Alene, the Shoshone Bannock, Paiute, and Lemha. There I would find my voice as an indigenous woman, as a mestizo, connecting to my indigenous roots. A voice that had been eluding me since I grew up in Europe as a military brat. My mother would encourage my voice as a filmmaker and as an artist to live in Idaho and tell the stories of the people of Idaho. Such story was Amy Trice, the only woman in US history to declare a war against the United States government to seek the homeland that her people were robbed from. It was then that my mother said to me, stay and create and develop, find your destiny, find your voice. Amy Trice and my mother passed away 11 months apart from each other. It devastated me, but then I knew then that the sacrifice that my mother sacrificed was also the sacrifice that the Aztecs sacrificed for their homeland and for Amy to find a reservation for her people, the Kootenai tribe. Gloria and I sacrificed separation, distance, and time from each other so that I could find my purpose in Idaho. What I know now is that the sacrifice that my mother and I both agreed to happened on that Victorian sofa in 1989. I stand before you today, returning back home, a full-fledged woman Sonia Rosario, the daughter of Gloria, who sacrificed everything so that I would find my destiny and journey. September 14, 1971. 
childbirth. After three agonizing days of labor, the doctors approached my father and asked, who will live? September 14, 1971, my father chose my mother. September 14, 1971, my father made the right choice. I would have chosen my mother too. September 14, 1971, against all odds, we both survived. September 14, 1971, rebirth. I am alive. Hi, my name is Laura Riojas Noriega, and I wanted to share my story of the ultimate gift of love. I wanted to talk about my beloved husband, Ruben Noriega. Ruben and I met in November of 1994, and we're married October of 1998. Ruben was diagnosed with polycystic kidney disease, and we knew one day he would need a kidney transplant. I always knew deep down in my heart that we were a perfect match, but I never knew how much we were. I gave him the gift of life and donated my left kidney to him in December of 2003. Reuben would often say, you saved my life by giving me the greatest gift. But what he didn't know is he blessed me with the greatest gift and that was love. There was nothing that I wouldn't have done for him. I would tell him a kidney was nothing I would have sacrificed my love in my life for you. So, January 14th of 2020, I made the ultimate sacrifice and let him go and said my final goodbye as he took his last breath. But I will forever be grateful to him and to God for the greatest love, a love that I will always always cherish, that I will always honor, and I will always remember him. And I will forever fight to find a cure for polycystic kidney disease so that no other family has to sacrifice their love, has to sacrifice their family, and has to say their final goodbye. So I will love you forever, my Reuben, and I will cherish the wonderful memories and thank you from the bottom of my heart.